Today on Bears TV Investigates, we're going to share the beginnings of four new Investigates topics as well as the results of our T5 longevity testing. Do you really need to change out those bulbs? Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beers TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, what the manuals are missing, with a focus on putting them to the test, and then rate that theory based on our scale of reef fantasy to reef certainty. This week we're going to do two things. At the end of today's video, we're going to share some pretty exciting details on an Investigates project that we're working on in unison with Neptune. Ecotech and Worldwide Corals, but before we get to that, we're going to answer that age-old question, do you really need to change out your T5 bulbs every year? We all know that they function much longer than that, but there are presumed spectrum shifts and PAR losses in that time. In addition to that, we're going to put one additional assumption to the test. Does dimming T5 bulbs or operating them at wattages significantly below what they're designed for really cause them to wear out prematurely? I have to say that most of the reefing community certainly feels like all of this is true and our CFO is certainly crossing his fingers that it is so I don't kill bulb sales today. But I think it's time we find out because based on some prior experiences and informal behind the scenes tests that we've done, I'm pretty skeptical at this point. To test bulb life, we use an ATI Sun Power running without the splash shield and fan set to 4.5, which produces pretty close to ideal PAR output. Knowing that we can't simulate every last install, which ranges from common retrofits and hoods like the BRS 160 to Sun Power fixtures like this one, but running at a variety of fan speeds as well as passively cooled fixtures, we just felt like the Sun Power with no shield and a cooled ballast was a solid middle ground between them all. We selected two different brands of bulbs and two different common spectrums as well, with the ATI Blue Plus and the Fuller Spectrum ATI Aqua Blue Special, as well as the Giesman Atinic Blue and Aqua Blue Azure. Keep in mind that these bulbs are all different spectrums, so they're really only in competition with themselves. Some have spectrums which are designed to be pleasing to the eye, not necessarily the highest par. The testing apparatus was just a two-foot retrofit kit with the spectrum and PAR sensors two feet from the bulbs. We didn't use reflectors in the bulbs because they can create sensor hotspots. All the bulbs were burned in for 100 hours prior to testing. For the first test, we wanted to simulate a year's worth of use on these bulbs, so we ran them for three seven-hour and 45-minute cycles a day with 15-minute cool-down periods between the cycles. Essentially running 24 hours a day for four months which is pretty close to a year's worth of eight hour cycles. So each monthly measurement point is approximately three months or 700 hours of use. Starting with the ATI Blue Plus, the PAR dropped from 16.84 to 15.4 or 8.55% in the first month and ended with a PAR of 14.5 or 13.9% output loss at the end of the simulated year or approaching around 3,000 hours of use. I'm sure some of you will note how low the PAR is in these measurements. This is partially due to the 24 inches between the bulbs and the sensors, which is similar to an actual install, but the lower PAR numbers are mostly related to the lack of reflectors. Reflectors are responsible for redirecting and focusing more than 50% of the light back downward. We're not using reflectors in our test because they add in an unnecessary variable. Now looking at the four spectrum shots in each simulated three month point, there is a very slight decrease in the blue spectrum, an increase in the green spectrum. I have to say that you would have to have a tool to measure this. This is not something that you could see with the naked eye. Next up, looking at the ATI Aqua Blue Special, pretty similar results. The PAR drop from 16.62 to 15.34 or 7.7 in the first three months, and then finished the 12 months of simulated use with a PAR 14.54 or a 12.52% loss. Now looking at the four spectrum shots, in this case the spectrum change is slightly more pronounced with green, yellow, red, and orange areas of the spectrum all increasing from the beginning to the end. In this case, it'd be really subtle, but I do think you could see a very slight, warm, or what's perceived as a yellow shift in spectrum or color. However, you'd have to be very in tune with your tank to notice a change this small. Now looking at the Giesman Atinic Blue, we had a starting par of 14.8 and finished the year with 14.35 or just a 3% drop. However, I will note there was some significant variations in performance at the three and six month points. It's pretty hard to say why the par would go back up the end, but we checked our data and this is what it is. So while this lamp had the smallest yearly drop of all of them, the performance was a bit irregular. 
Looking at the four spectrum shots, you can see that the spectrum is very similar to the blue plus. However, there is a slight emphasis on the deeper blue range and a subtle amount of orange, red, and even infrared. However, the shift was nearly identical over time, just a very subtle change to blue and green, not something that you could likely see with the eye. Lastly, looking at the Giesman Aqua Blue Azure, we had a starting par of 16.05 and a year-end par of 11.73 or a 26.92% decrease, which is a significant falloff at the end of the year. Looking at the spectrum at all four different points again, on this fuller spectrum lamp, you can see the shift to the green, yellow, orange, red, and even infrared in this case. To a very keen eye, I think this type of shift could be noticed with the eye and perceived as a warmer or yellow or visual effect. So looking at this, I guess this is a personal decision, but I think the bulbs here either met or exceeded expectations. Based on par alone, I don't think many reefers would buy new bulbs at an output loss of 10 to 15% range. If you did, you'd be changing them out every six months. I think many reefers might decide to change them out closer to a 20% loss, give or take a few percent. In this case, I think the Giesman Aqua Blue Azure met industry expectations for about a 12-month changeout period. The Atenic Blue's performance was a bit more erratic and it's hard to make a firm recommendation. Both the ATI bulbs exceeded expectations at just a 12 to 13 percent drop in PAR output in our simulated year. I really don't think anyone would change out the lamps at that point, at least I wouldn't, especially considering the three month point is an eight and a half percent drop already. Now looking at this from a spectrum shift perspective, I have to say on both the blue bulbs, there's no way that I would consider changing them out based on spectrum alone. The shift is so small, I'm certain there isn't any way that someone could see this with the naked eye, and I don't think there's any chance there would be a significant impact on either coral health or algae growth. However, on those fuller spectrum bulbs, there was a more pronounced spectrum shift. This is still something that only the reefers with the keenest eye would be able to see, even more so if blended with other bluer spectrum bulb types. While the slight increase in red may feed some algae, I think it's unlikely to be the most significant cause of an increase in algae in the tank. I also don't think the corals would be impacted to a significant degree by this still very subtle shift in spectrum. I think this brings up a pretty interesting topic. For decades, reefers have been discussing the impact of spectrum shift in their bulbs, and I'm sure some bulb types like halides have more pronounced shifts, but the thought is if the spectrum mix isn't perfect, it will impact coral health or even algae growth. Yeah, with today's LED approach, we're just flipping switches, tuning knobs, and mostly just tuning to whatever looks good to the eye with almost no regard to how that spectrum mix is going to impact coral health or algae growth. One of these approaches is seriously flawed, and I suspect it's actually both. The subtle shifts we saw today will almost certainly have limited to no noticeable impact on coral health or growth and likely limited effect on algae. If I'm wrong on this, basically every LED user is going to have serious challenges because there's almost zero chance you can use LEDs to create these exact spectrum peaks, both based on technology as well as using only the human eye to tune them. That said, tuning your LED is simply to what's pleasing to your eye with near zero knowledge on what the resulting spectrum peaks or mix looks like stands in the face of not just everything that reefers have been saying for ages, but I also think goes against common sense. Corals have spent a millennia adapting to the sun and how the ocean filters it out at various depths. Spectrum mixes that are at least similar in important ranges should absolutely perform better than others. Approaches like providing tested mixes based on results like the AB plus mix on the Radeon or Kessel Spectrum Logic are probably some of the better approaches. Okay, so moving on, we're going to look at that second question. Does dimming T5 bulbs reduce the usable lifespan of the bulbs in terms of either spectrum or PAR output? In this case, we ran two sets of ATI bulbs on a dimmable ATI SunPower T5 fixture, one set to ramp from 0 to 100% for four hours, and then from 100% to 0 for four hours, three times a day. For the other set of bulbs, we wanted to exaggerate the effect of running them well below the rated wattages and ramp them from 0 to 50% over four hours and then from 50 to 0% three times a day, meaning the majority of the cycle is at pretty low wattages. If reduced wattages does affect lamp life, it should be exaggerated here. Looking at 0 to 100%, first we're looking at a PAR drop from 17.4 to 15.36 or an 11.7% drop in output over the simulated year. This is actually a smaller drop in PAR than running them at full power. The spectrum shift looks identical to the other tests as well, so it seems like dimming them doesn't have a significant negative impact on usable lamp life in terms of spectrum or PAR. 
Looking at the 0 to 50% test, we saw the same thing. An initial par of 17.5 and ending with 15.45, which is the exact same 11.7% drop in par as the other dimming test. Same limited impact on spectrum. So to rate today's theory from reef fantasy to reef certainty, you really need to change out your T5 bulbs every year. I'm going to give this one a 5. It does appear like some bulb types would benefit from changing them out every 12 months from a PAR perspective, but the ATI bulbs in particular seem to be running pretty strong at 12 months. Based on spectrum alone, I think I might consider changing out the fuller spectrum lamps at 12 months, but the bluer bulb spectrum change is so limited I can't imagine why anyone would do it for that reason. Rating the next theory of dimming T5 bulbs causes them to wear out prematurely. I'm going to give this one a zero and it appears to be a complete reef fantasy. As long as they're burned in properly, dimming your lamps seems to have near zero effect on lamp life. Now there's one thing that none of this considers and that's many reefers run their lamps for more than eight hours and we'd all like to know what exactly happens after 12 months. So we're going to simulate another year over the next four months and then update the results then as well. I think we'll all get some solid insight reefers can use to make more informed decisions on lamp life and bulb changeouts. At the same time, we're moving forward on some brand new experiments based on improving coral coloration and growth. Before I share the details, I want to thank the teams involved with Ecotech, Neptune, and Worldwide Corals. There's a tremendous amount of time, money, and resources that go into experiments like these. All of these companies have donated over 10 grand in corals and gear to make this happen for you. I have to thank them for investing in this project, not just operating as a solid manufacturer, but also investing in the future of reefing and helping us all be more successful. So in that spirit, we have four experiments which are all on the cusp of starting, likely in late February. First, do trace elements really have an effect on coloration or growth? Does higher pH really rapidly increase calcification and growth of stony corals? Does deep blue or UV spectrum affect either coloration or growth? And lastly, does flow rate increases increase growth rates? More or less, does all this stuff that we're buying and the effort that we're putting into this actually produce results? If so, how much so we can make informed decisions on how we design these systems and allocate resources? We have Aaron here managing all of the experiments on a daily basis and all of them have redundant control tanks as well as redundant experiment tanks in an effort to really get to the heart of these questions and be as confident about the results as possible. So if you like what we're doing here and appreciate the effort that Ecotech, Neptune, and Worldwide Corals is putting into this, let us all know with a quick thumbs up and this time a quick comment and subscribe because we release new reefing videos all week long, every week. So see you next week with our next update to the ULM series where we select ULM lighting options for all three tanks.